Almost every gun guy under age 40 has heard that Holosun's coming out with a thermal reflex sight. Holosun is known to provide decent quality red dot sights that seem to work and be much cheaper than the top tier stuff from EOTech and Aimpoint. Is Holosun just as good as your Navy SEAL helicopter sniper equipment? No, but for a lot of use cases, the Holosun's good enough. Video games like Call of Duty and, of course, our innate drive for self-preservation have catapulted night vision and thermal imaging into the mainstream gun culture. The only reason why everyone doesn't have low light capability is that both night vision and thermal units are shockingly expensive. Special thanks to Limitless America for helping us out with getting some thermal devices on the channel. Go check them out and, uh, you know, they'll take care of you. Let them know that Spec Ops Gear sent you. So let's talk about night vision and thermal here. Affordable PVS 14s and thermal rifle scopes are generally two to three thousand dollars. Notice that I said those are the affordable ones. Your poverty tier night vision and thermal devices are going to be one thousand to two thousand dollars. Higher end units are going to be four thousand dollars and up. In some cases, way up. The internet absolutely lost its mind when the Holosun DRS line was unveiled in three trim levels: night vision, thermal. And then the highest one is Thermal Fusion, all offered in a compact, lightweight, and competitively priced reflex site. While the Holosun Thermal Red Dot is not available yet, there are some things that we can tell about it based on the limited footage that's been released and the spec sheet. The Holosun DRS is offered in three trim levels. Night Vision only, which is the DRS NV, coming in at about a thousand bucks. The Thermal only version is the DRS TH, which is coming in at right around $1,600, and their Pro version, which is actually a thermal fusion, so night vision and thermal together, and that's the DRS TH Pro, which is coming in right around $2,300. We know that the DRS NV comes with a digital night vision sensor with 1024 by 768 resolution that can process up to 60 frames per second. Based on our testing of the Psyonix Opsin, digital monocular, we know that 30 frames per second feels very laggy. 60 frames per second is a little bit laggy, but useful, and 90 frames per second is actually pretty nice to use. So even though we haven't put the unreleased red dot through its paces yet, we can reasonably conclude that the digital night vision portion probably process and feel a little bit laggy, but at 60 frames per second, it'd still be somewhat useful. Let's talk about digital night vision and active IR light. Digital night vision sensors require more ambient light than proper intensifier tube night vision. This means that digital units will often rely heavily on active IR illumination to see clearly. If you're hunting raccoons and coyotes in the backyard, this really isn't a factor. But if you've happened to find yourself on a two-way range in a hypothetical red dawn, airsoft, LARPing, paratrooping adventure, then having a huge IR spotlight running will give your position away to anyone who matters, and you might find yourself getting respawned and becoming a loot drop pretty quickly. As a point of comparison, the Psyonix Opsin has really raised the bar in low light sensitivity, but it's still not quite as good as intensifier tube night vision. What you gotta know is that the Psyonix Opsin runs about $2,500 these days, so I'd question whether Hollow Sun's digital low light sensor is up to par with the Opsin when the Hollow Sun night vision only version is coming in at right around 1,000 and the Opsin is $2,500. My conclusion is that the Holosun night vision version is probably going to be useful for things like pest control if you ran a strong IR spotlight, maybe something like Surefire Vampire Light, something like that. But if you're planning on going up against a near peer opponent who might also be armed with night vision, that's really going to give your position away. Let's talk about the Holosun's thermal sensor. So the Hollow Sun Thermal Red Dot is coming in at $1,600, which is actually a pretty good value for a 384 core thermal sensor. But you do need to understand that 384 is at or very near the minimum acceptable resolution for a budget thermal scope. If you want higher resolution thermal, then you really need to have a 640 core unit. Unfortunately, most 640 core weapon sites are in the four to $6,000 price range, with a few units like the AGM Rattler TS35 640 coming in right around $3,800 MSRP. What does this mean to you, the consumer? It means that at 1x magnification and a 384 core thermal sensor, the Holosun will most likely be useful inside of 50 yards 
you might be able to get 100 yards out of it using a digital zoom, but because it's only a 384 core sensor, the digital zoom will cause image quality to suffer greatly. My conclusion on the thermal sensor for the Holosun is that it's good enough. Don't expect to be just wowed and impressed by it. It's good for the price. Before I used the Holosun thermal as my primary thermal weapon site, I'd start looking around and the AGM Rattler with a 384 core sensor is one that really comes to mind. For low light pest control, the Holosun thermal reflex site will most likely work pretty well at close range. While it hasn't been released yet, we'd be excited to pair the Hollow Sun with a suppressed 22 long rifle for a convenient and really lightweight way to dispatch offending varmints quickly and quietly. Some of the higher end, higher magnification thermal scopes, like our current top choice, Infrared MK1 in a 640 core, can get a little bit heavy. In contrast, I could really see a compact thermal reflex sight being simple and most of all, light. Currently, we've been running the SIG Echo 3, which is a reflex style thermal optic on top of an integrally suppressed 22 long rifle. The resolution and frame rate, etc., leaves a little bit to desired. What's really nice about it is the overall compact packaging and the very lightweight nature of it. In our opinion, this low light pest control may be paired with a 22 long rifle, perhaps a 300 blackout. This would probably be the strongest use case for this much anticipated budget friendly optic. Let's talk about the Holosun Thermal for the use case of prepared citizen. First and foremost, thermal red dot sites don't really work like you think they're going to work. People seem to think that they're going to be doing CQB run and gun with the Holosun Thermal like it's an EOTech. But based on my experience with the SIG Echo 3 Thermal Reflex site, you can't really use them for run and gun shooting, at least not efficiently. The problem is, is that these thermal sensors have a limited field of view and are weapon mounted. So you can't really move around the dark effectively without a separate head mounted night vision device. But the thermal viewing screens in these reflex sites are way too bright for passive aiming through NVG. But I suppose you could wear a PVS 14 on your non-dominant eye. There's still one glaring flaw that can't really be overcome, in my opinion, with the Holosun Thermal Red Dot. When you look at tactical low light devices, they have two things in common. They have short eye relief and they all come with rubber eye cups. The short eye relief and the rubber eye cups are there because the light pollution coming off of a low light device will light up your face like a Christmas tree if you go up against near peer opponents. Of course, hypothetical in LARPing. Thermal reflex sites have lit LCD screens and very long eye relief, which will make you extremely vulnerable to anyone with a basic PVS-14, an Opsin, maybe even an Aurora. For the prepared citizen, if you tried to use the Holosun thermal reflex site against a near peer opponent with low light capability, you're probably going to get smoked. Final thoughts. The Holosun thermal red dot does offer a lot of compelling features at a very attractive price point. While the thermal sensor isn't top tier, it is in line with offerings from established players like AGM. The best things about the Holosun appear to be low weight and low price. The biggest downside of the unit will most likely be the fact that it'll light up your face like a Christmas tree to near peer threats on a hypothetical airsoft two-way range. If you're considering the Holosun Thermal Red Dot, you may also consider an AGM TS-25 or an AGM TS-35 because those have a lot shorter eye relief, so you won't light up your face as much. Holosun has developed a reputation for providing decent quality at an excellent price, so Limitless America will definitely be stocking this new thermal reflex site as soon as possible. Thank you.